So what you're going to do is, usually there's two ways to collect a sample. One way is to use something like a, like a sample bucket, where basically you would use something like a, a regular old bucket here, uh, usually attached to a rope, and you can lower it into the creek or off the bridge, for example, to collect your water sample. We usually recommend that you collect a sample where the main flow of the water is. That's usually, may not necessarily be the center of the channel, but it's where the deepest part of the channel is for a stream. So it may be off to one side, but generally it'll be some, somewhere close to the center of the stream. And you'll lower the bucket using a rope, for example, and you're going to allow it to fill up about halfway. And then you're going to retrieve the bucket, and you want to give it a real good vigorous swirl to kind of rinse the inside of the bucket. And then you want to dump it off into, uh, onto the ground or away from where you're going to be collecting your sample. If you dump it right where you're going to be collecting your sample at, it's going to churn up sediment and everything else in the water. It's going to kind of bias your results. So dump it off to the side, and then you're going to lower the bucket again to collect your sample. The reason why we do that initial rinse is because that rinse will get rid of most of the bacteria that may have come from a previous sample site. So the samples that you're going to be getting with that rinse bucket is going to contain bacteria that came from the sample site that you're currently collecting from. When you fill up your sample bottle, you open up your sample bottle. It's a sterile bottle. So you do not want to touch the insides of the uh, lid or the threads of the bottle with your fingers. And what you're going to do is you're going to take the bottle and we'll do what's called a U-sample. Basically what you're going to do is go from one side of the bucket and you're going to fill it like a U and then retrieve it and you're going to have water in here. And you're going to always move that bottle from one side of the bucket to the other. You don't want to just leave the bottle sticking in the water like this to allow it to fill up because any bacteria from your hands could wash into that bottle and your sample will be contaminated because you won't know if the bacteria came from your hands or if it was from the sample itself. So we collected a sample here and you'll notice that the bottle is only about uh, halfway, three quarters away full. That's, it. That's the ideal amount that you want to fill the bottle to. You don't want to fill it all the way up to the top because you want to leave a little bit of an air gap. That will allow you to mix the sample when you get back to when you're doing your cobble sand test. Now if you're sampling in a stream, basically if you're wading into a stream or if, even if you're like on like a boat um, and you're kind of leaning over the side of your boat to collect your sample, what you want to do is you first want to make sure that you're facing upstream and the water, the water flow is coming towards you. So in a typical stream, you're facing upstream, the water is going to be flowing towards you and behind you. If you're wading in the stream, you want to actually walk up a little bit to collect your sample because any sediment that's picked up from uh, when you're moving around in your feet, you want that to wash behind you and again not to get into your sample bottle because we want to know what's in the water, not in your sediment. And then basically what you do is again you do a kind of a U sample away from your body to get rid, to make sure that no bacteria from your body has contaminated your sample and you fill it up. If you're on the boat, uh, as long as you stay away from the prop of your boat, um, so midway or, or towards the forward of your boat, and lower your bottle, again kind of moving it in a direction uh, to allow your bottle to fill up. And these bottles are very, very small, they're about 30 milliliters, and they'll, uh, they'll fill up in no time at all. Once you get your sample, you are then, uh, it's a good idea to label the bottles. Uh, some people will use like a, a printer label, they'll, they'll fix it on here beforehand and then they'll use like a permanent marker to mark the sample station. Um, we found that with these bottles, using a permanent marker like a Sharpie marker doesn't work very well on the sides of the bottles, it kind of rubs off pretty easily. So we tell volunteers that's a good idea to mark the lids, that's usually a big no-no because it's possible to switch lids between sample bottles. So if you do mark the lids of your bottles with your sample site and you're going to be testing more than one sample at a time, you want to make sure that you uh, don't open more than one bottle at a time. What about using masking tape on the bottle and writing on the masking tape? Uh, masking tape is a good idea. Masking tape will definitely work. Um, we 
do know that if the masking tape gets wet and again you're using a sharpie it gets kind of hard to write so you might have to have a towel or something to kind of dry it but masking tape can certainly work um, if you're uh, not going to be testing your sample right away uh, say you're sampling multiple sites it's a good idea to put your sample bottles in like a little cooler with some ice to keep the samples cold because if you don't keep the samples cold chilled down to about uh, uh, refrigerator temperature the bacteria in here could actually start to reproduce on its own if underneath the right conditions or could die off. By chilling it, you kind of put it in a, a state of suspended animation. So when you test the bacteria doing the call scan, when you get back, the bacteria that you have in the bottle is pretty much the same level of bacteria that you had when you collected that original sample. If you keep your samples refrigerated, uh, like on the ice in a cooler or put in your refrigerator, you can test this up to a day later, up to 24 hours after collection. Um, most folks I know that collect samples, they'll have like a little, like a small little cooler that with just some ice cubes in there, and that works fine. I've even had some folks use like a big gulp cup with ice cubes, and they just stick the bottles in there, and that works fine as well. So whatever, whatever would work best for you.